Thank you so much. Am I audible? You know, just last week, I was invited to this great game of cricket. It was called the TPL, the Tirumala Cricket League. You know, gully cricket spin-off of uh, the great IPL, replete with real money, player auctions, team jerseys and the works. The reason I bring this up here today is because I feel the success of the game is truly when, you know, there are spin-offs and, uh, you know, uh, variations of the game uh, and this happens at a society level. So, cricket and IPL have percolated to the very fabric of the Indian society. So much so that half a billion viewers don't just tune into the live telecast of the matches on TV, but also come up with their own versions of the game. How cool is that, right? And here we are to discuss something bigger than IPL, overall cricket on TV, the platform for driving business impact. And with me are panelists who have experienced the success of this association in different ways. Uh, so let me start with Mr. Krishna Abhuddha. Um, no, you, uh, TV has been a very integral part of uh, Pali's media plan over the years. Uh, last year, you were one of the prominent advertisers of the IPL. Uh, tell us, uh, how has association with TV and cricket really been for you? Yeah, uh, good afternoon all. Uh, I think, um, Parley, considering that it's an uh, extremely mass brand, um, We've always uh, looked at boarding cricket as a vehicle to reach the audiences. We all know that uh, uh, cricket particularly helps us reach the younger TG, uh, which is extremely difficult to get uh, otherwise on television. It, 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 uh, so so it, it becomes extremely expensive, either one, uh, very expensive or extremely difficult to, to tap onto the young uh, audiences. I think a sport like cricket uh, gives us a, a very, uh, works out as an extremely good vehicle for us to reach uh, that audience. Um, at the same time, we've also uh, uh, seen that a significant proportion of women actually have started uh, uh, taking interest in the sport. I think that also has worked uh, in our favor. We've seen in the recent times, uh, in the past uh, uh, five, eight odd years, uh, uh, cricket, women's cricket is also st started gaining prominence and we've seen the leagues also getting floated and that has also sort of uh, 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 helped increase the interest in uh, overall cricket uh, from the uh, female audiences as well. Uh, so if you look at the construct of Parley's portfolio, we have brands either targeted at uh, uh, children and or uh, predominantly women. Uh, housewives. Uh, and there are of course a few brands which uh, stagger uh, and which are for, uh, uh, targeted to the youngsters as well. Uh, our, our philosophy is very simple. If, uh, if, we, if we target kids uh, who are going to be the next generation, uh, it, uh, we, 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 it's, the philosophy is very simple to catch them young. So I think uh, from that perspective, uh, we've always looked at cricket as a great opportunity and yes, uh, talking about uh, our, our association uh, uh, during the last season uh, with IPL particularly, I think uh, has been a fantastic association. Uh, uh, so we, we've uh, also uh, maximized uh, the use of uh, this event uh, to split between the mass users and uh, uh, mass uh, users as well as the premium users as well. I think a combination of SD and HD enabled us to reach a certain set of audiences exclusively. So uh, uh, HD became a great vehicle for us to reach uh, the, uh, the, the platina audiences, uh, the Parley platina audiences. Uh, that helped us. Uh, I think uh, in that sense, uh, I really feel that uh, uh, an association with an event like uh, IPL has worked out uh, quite well for Parley. You can actually catch the entire family together in one space, Absolutely. watching the big screen. Interesting. Yeah. So you, you spend around 85% of your ad spends uh, on TV. How much is it for cricket? Uh, difficult to uh, specify, uh, but uh, yes, uh, it, it is a major chunk. So and so if if I were to 
sort of uh, site. So of the 16 seasons that we've had so far, uh, we've participated in cricket in most of the seasons, barring one or two where we had given it a miss. Otherwise, we've been there uh, uh, for most of the seasons. So, uh, uh, and we, uh, when we participate, we participate uh, uh, in, a, in a strong uh, in, in a strong way. So, which means uh, we need to be present throughout the tournament, which lasts as much as about 45-50 days, and which means a sizable investment. So, so we do spend a sizable uh, chunk of our monies on uh, cricket. Thank you. You know, let me also, uh, let me come to Mr. Dubey now, and firstly, let me take a moment to congratulate you on uh, completing three decades with Dabar. Guys, I think that deserves a round of applause. I think you are to Dabar what TV is to cricket. <laughs> okay. So let, we were talking about spends and uh, Dabar has increased its TV spends by around 20% in 2023. And a big part of it was in uh, the World Cup. Tell us how has cricket really helped you uh, reap return on investments? Return on investment on cricket? Why cricket? I don't think there's any return on investment on cricket. It's not for the faint-hearted, you know. Cricket is not for the faint-hearted. You have to, first of all, you know, before you start talking, you have to put a lot of money on the table and then, you know, uh, get these guys to come and talk to you, right? Uh, otherwise, no one will come to you talk to you. That's one. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's lot, there's a lot of burn in cricket. Like, initially, there's a lot of burn. You have to uh, not be faint-hearted, <laughs> number one. Then uh, you, you can't be continuously be present through cricket. You can create an impact, go out and then. So it's like companies like ours which have been in a uh, uh, infinite business building so as to say, like you have to keep growing the company all your life. Uh, for these companies, a lot of new brands. Mm -hmm. it, for, for new brands, it, it works a lot. Brands which are established, which have a very high market share, like upwards of 60%, those brands, it uh, uh, may help you uh, in a very small way, but for new brands, it definitely hurt, uh, helps a lot. Another thing is that uh, 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 with cricket, uh, you can uh, be sure of reaching newer audiences. Uh, our play mostly has been women and, uh, uh, and children, and uh, that set watches a certain set of programs on TV. And uh, uh, that gets saturated very fast, uh, especially in the Hindi heartland. In southern markets, those numbers are much higher. So those, there the play is different. So what happens is that uh, basically you're reaching out to the same people again and again. So if you want to reach out to newer people, younger people, you have to do something different. So cricket offers you that. So reaching out to newer audiences, uh, reaching out to uh, children, reaching out to younger TG, uh, People uh, watch together. Uh, uh, people watch TV as a as a family together. Uh, so a uh, lot of spillover also you get. Uh, that's one. Secondly, the numbers which you get for cricket, they are all India numbers. You reach out to the all India pan, pan India audiences. That's another unique way of uh, a unique thing which uh, cricket offers. Uh, with respect to uh, uh, say, like if I talk about my company, uh, we have traditionally been investing only behind one set of genre. We spend a lot of money and impact like Big Boss, etc. There also there's a lot of saturation. So this, this really uh, helps us uh, reach out to uh, newer audiences and build the brand. But can you sustain it over the period of time for a, for a long, long term? I don't know that yet. Okay. Uh, but for new launches, for creating a quick impact, it is like brilliant idea. But it's not for the faint hearted. We've established that. Uh, I'd also want to come to uh, Mr. Ghoshal, who's joining us virtually. Um, now, Mr. Ghoshal, as far as Volta's ACs are concerned, I think the timing of the IPL can't be more apt. Uh, you know, it's scheduled just before the onslaught of summer. Um, and you know, not surprisingly, IPL has obviously seen a steady partner in Volta's on TV. Uh, tell us how, apart from the seasonality part of it, how has IPL and cricket as a whole helped you uh, drive brand recall and sales for the brand? Uh, Mr. Goshal, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, Am I audible? Yeah, we can. We can. All right. And there would be a lag because I'm from coming in from Delhi right now. Firstly, apologies for not making it over there in person. Uh, this session was about effectiveness of IPL on TV 
so I'll come straight to the point. Uh, see, sports viewership in India uh, is all, almost touching 800 plus million. And out of that, IPL is covering two third of it. So there is no debate as such that whether IPL is effective or not. If you're riding sports, you need to ride IPL. Uh, uh, there's no second thought about it. Uh, but I would like to emphasize on three points uh, uh, on this uh, platform. When you talk, talk about IPL, uh, reach, affinity, and outcome. Uh, when I spoke about the reach of, the, of, of IPL on TV, which is definitely consistent and growing year by year, uh, along with the advent of digital, still it stands out uh, if you look at last year's figures. So there is no, uh, there is no question that uh, you can live without television if you want to leverage IPL. You need to do both, perhaps, or you need to do at least television. Uh, secondly, uh, affinity-wise, uh, as some of the panelists said earlier, and also what I heard from Soumya uh, about brand awareness, which we forget in today's time and age, it's a very vital and a very effective tool to be consistent on a property like IPL uh, because it has to align with the business objectives. Uh, IPL has got many opportunities. You have to see whether you're a startup or an established brand and use it effectively. You could use it, excuse me, you could use it uh, for, for various uh, objectives. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a new brand, of course, you need to use it across all platforms on ground, television, digital, but if you're an established brand, you could use it for re-establishing your story. And that's what we have done over a period of time. Uh, we were never uh, faint-hearted, as, as someone said, uh, but we were, uh, I would say, we were uh, optimized in our approach uh, in terms of using IPL. There are ways and methods to use IPL in an optimal manner or, or in a very large uh, uh, you know, budget uh, format. Uh, we have been using IPL because we have we have a summer products category which aligns with the IPL timing. And uh, of course, it's become expensive over a period of time, but so has it, has it given returns. So you need to see how much you need to invest for uh, your products at a particular point of time. And, uh, and also realize that those, those investments are giving you returns in terms of market share or in terms of brand equity or in terms of top of mind. That's very important. If you measure the, your brand equity or a top of mind or your market share after the summer season gets over, you'll get to know that yes, IPL has given you returns. Thirdly, in terms of overall outcome of the, of the, of the, of the, of whatever you do, you need to see that whether you have built a story or through IPL on television. Uh, some brands uh, do build stories over a period of time. As Soumya did point out that you need to build a consistent story across a period of time. And if that is objective, if this property comes back to you every year, year after year, please use it effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goshal. Uh, Radhi, I want to come to you and touch upon something that he mentioned. Uh, now, FMCG, uh, telecom, mobile, consumer durables, these were the big spenders traditionally on IPL and all the biggest cricket tournaments. Over the past few years, we've seen a lot of digital first, uh, first brands coming and spending a big chunk of their budgets on cricket on TV. Uh, fintech, edtech, all of that. Have the big cricket tournaments on TV kind of become the rite of passage for brands at all stages? You know, the matured ones like uh, Parley and Dabur, and of course the new ones like PhonePay. Uh, is it like a rite of passage truly today? And what is really the lure of cricket on TV for brands? Yeah, um, <clears throat> a couple of things, uh, Anita. I mean, uh, you're completely right. I mean, the uh, the kind of brands that are coming on board today on uh, cricket might have, might be a little more different from the traditional ones that were there a uh, couple of years back. Uh, but like the other panelists said, um, you know, the objectives that you know, a brand needs to achieve to a certain extent is satisfied by cricket as a platform, right? Uh, I'm not only talking about IPL or World Cup, which are really um, uh, uh, the bigger impact-driven ones, but even, let's say, test matches, even the bilateral series. So overall, it's cricket, there are lots of objectives that they uh, that the cricket as a, uh, as a sports uh, medium satisfies. Uh, from the new age clients that you were talking about in terms of the rite of passage, even there, I mean, uh, you have a 
host of objectives that it's satisfying them, right? Or it's adhering to uh, addressing for them. Um, you have like, like Rajiv Dubey said that it's not for the faint-hearted. You have the not so faint-hearted who are really carpet bombing using, uh, you know, uh, IPL World Cup as a uh, uh, as a medium. Uh, it's all about the upper funnel. It's all about making an impact. It's all about probably um, <clears throat> a launch of a brand or, you know, when you are wanting to, probably you have saturated all the digital audiences that you have uh, reached out to probably through performance, through every other digital aspects. And now you want to come on to television as a medium for mass reach, right? And that's when you start looking at, you know, uh, cricket from an upper funnel perspective. Right? And we have so many examples of all the new age brands that do that. Uh, but to a certain extent, uh, a, a, a cricket also, uh, uh, you know, uh, addresses uh, the last mile, right? Uh, in terms of uh, delivering footfalls, um, helping increase search to the website, right? Um, uh, in fact, uh, we, we have a whole host of app economy clients that we manage. Um, and every time that we've, uh, you know, advertised on cricket, and I'm not just talking about IPL or World Cup, we do see, a, uh, you know, a spike in uh, sh share of search. And that's one of the barometers for us to look at success. Uh, even beyond search, right, uh, it could be footfalls, it could be app downloads, it could be installs. Uh, and we've seen that through a couple of campaigns that we've run for clients like FarmEasy, LensCut, right? Uh, so, um, I think to a certain extent, what, like what everybody uh, has said so far, uh, it's not just about driving top of mind, it's just not about mass reach, uh, it's also about how we advise our clients to use those platforms, right? Uh, whether it's in the stage of building consideration, whether it's in the stage of driving performance. Uh, we do have metrics to say that it does deliver on all of these, right? But I think to the... in larger lot, I think most people see it as, you know, let me use it as a pa platform to achieve quick reach, build impact, you know, burn lots of money, and get away, you know, in that two-month period, right? So that's what, yeah. Interesting, you know, the, the part you spoke about, you know, the search part of it, you know, it's, to simply put it, I think when you're watching cricket on TV, your phone is disengaged, you can actually use it, you see an ad, you love the product, you want to know more about it, you can quickly search on your mobile, which can't happen if you're watching the match on your mobile phone. So I think that's a big plus there. And uh, again, talking about searches, I think I'd like to come to you, Vikas. You come up with this very interesting survey, uh, which talks about how KPIs uh, of brands are being met differently uh, on digital uh, versus uh, TV. Please, please elaborate on how you went about right. it. Right. So, you know, this whole notion that, you know, cricket or IPL in, in general or TV in general is expensive comes from this uh, uh, whole idea that TV is not measurable. Now, this could have been the case like long time ago, but our, at, as we speak today, TV is a very measurable platform, measurable very much like digital. Now, what has changed in the last few years? Okay. In past, you know, while you are watching TV or uh, your brand is on TV, the KPI of the advertiser would reflect like few months down the line in their sales and so on. But at this point in time, uh, you know, you can very, very directly measure what is the impact on search share for that particular advertiser because people are watching on TV and as Nita said, they are also searching on mobile phones. And uh, you know, we have analyzed over the last few years probably upwards of a few thousand campaigns across different genres and across different categories and so on. And one thing that we have found is that, you know, search share in a particular category for brand is one of the highly correlated or highest correlated parameter on which future market share is dependent. And TV is able to very successfully uh, move that search share in your advantage. In fact, you know, um, uh, I can tell you, in addition to the case study that is already in front of you on your tables that we presented, there was another uh, uh, a fintech client, you know, um, an up-and-coming fintech client, actually. So they did uh, a whole of cricket last year, and the search share advantage that they got, not only during the time while they were advertising, but it continued. And uh, uh, after, you know, of course, you know, you cannot continue at that high pace uh, uh, advertising on cricket. You know, it has kind of shifted their baseline of search share. So definitely measurability of TV is possible. And a lot of our clients are using it right now to more optimally plan TV, right? Uh, if now we say that, okay, TV is measurable, 
uh, we need to put also TV and as an extension to that cricket, uh, uh, like on the same pedestal as digital. So there has to be possibilities of optimizations over there. We optimize uh, digital campaigns to the nth bit, right? Same has to happen on television as well to get advertiser best ROIs. And TV at this point in time uh, uh, provides the cheapest way to increase uh, your key KPIs. Like, okay, overall absolute number might look high, but if you look into the KPI incremental bit, it comes out to be the cheapest. Cheapest to the tune of that, you know, if you're an up and coming brand, for example, we just spoke about like many of these uh, newer age brands coming on cricket or latching up on cricket. Why is this happening? Look, I'm an engineer by education. And uh, uh, a lot of these newer age uh, uh, tech companies are also probably, the management teams are engineers. They have this uh, probably uh, more pronounced hunger for like seeing numbers. But they get drowned in like uh, CTRs and uh, CPVs and you know, all these kind of things. But with TV becoming measurable, a lot of these guys are coming onto this bandwagon they, where they see that okay, what their brand journey could have taken like five years, cricket could cut it short to like one year. So the choice is this, many of these new age industries are winner takes all or, or winner takes most kind of scenarios. So uh, can you afford to kind of spend the same kind of money and reach the same uh, uh, you know, KPI levels or search share levels in five years? There will be no market left in five years. So that's where cricket comes in. If TV is like seven to eight times cheaper compared to digital, uh, Cricket uh, uh, is within TV itself, is one of the best uh, uh, ways to leverage and you know, expedite your journey to dominance. That's what we are seeing right now. So basically we can go beyond the archaic GRP to measure TV now. Of course, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll talk about like, you know, third party cookies going away, right? So if third parties cookies are going away, you see, I mean, Firefox has already banned them, like Safari is already gone, right? And probably sooner than later, Google is also going to take that away from Chrome. Now, what that will do is that, you know, all your MTA analysis that you do on digital, right? You, you, you do all those uh, multi-touch attribution studies on digital and say, okay, everything, all this, all this purchases are happening through uh, um, uh, digital, while maybe there is some kind of brand salience that I get on TV. That's not right, and that not, would not even be possible after these cookies going, going away. So sooner or later, you will have to build an integrated MTA right where you can say because all these nice consumer journeys that uh, brands right now are used to getting on digital are going to go away that will bring tv and digital on the same platform and then these newer uh, uh, algorithms that are coming up right newer ways of measuring mtas are going to come up there you will be able to very clearly see the impact and that's why these new age companies are now coming up faster time to dominance search share I'd like to come to the advertiser, and like Vivika said, you know, cricket is the, one of the best things to put your money on for advertisers on TV. And you know, 2003, uh, 23, in a way, has been this watershed moment for cricket. It sort of reminds me of Amir Khan from the film Three Idiots screaming, free, free, free. You know, we saw free streaming being introduced for the first time last year in India. And yet we saw IPL and World Cup each getting record uh, high viewership of half a billion on TV. Um, so I would like to come to you, uh, Mr. Buddha, firstly, uh, is cricket, according to you, best enjoyed on TV? Is that why this kind of viewership, despite uh, giving a free option? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, uh, I, I, I really feel uh, that it can actually really be very well enjoyed. So I remember uh, good olden days uh, when uh, I, I was talking about, like, uh, let's say, uh, the Doordarshan day, days, uh, when, when it was sort of launched, introduced to the country uh, and there was uh, very little content and we would have some series and uh, we would have all friends, family sitting together and having a great time. I think those are some really precious moments. So I, I remember of tournaments happening in, in India, in Australia, in Sharjah and people watching them all together. I think that is something uh, uh, very, very um, enjoyable uh, for, for, a, for, a, for an event like cricket and, uh, and we all know that uh, cricket uh, is religion in India and uh, yeah, it, it is definitely best enjoyed uh, with uh, near and dear ones. Uh, the kind of experiences, the kind of, I remember uh, also at the same time, so, so one is that and then even if you, if you are 
for for some reason you have some near and dear ones which are who are away uh, you can always be in touch and this has happened i i distinctly remember during 2011 world cup uh, and that to finals uh, so i was really in touch with so many friends and this was through mobile at the same time so i think uh, uh, so the 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 moments to share the predictions and and the kind of superstitions attached with the sport like cricket i think are really v- very very special and i think these these can be best enjoyed only on a medium like television is what i feel mr goshar i'd like to come to you uh, do you think cricket is best watched on tv and as an advertiser it makes the most sense to put your money uh, on cricket on tv uh, television is uh, yeah. as i said television is can you hear me am i audible yes we can hear you all right there's a lag sorry for that uh, see i as i said tv is uh, is a very vibrant platform for this property but i don't think we should be talking about tv versus digital because they all work together i don't think anything on the ipl ecosystem works in isolation whether it's on ground whether it is television whether it's digital you need to leverage all three of them together if at all you are a new brand you may leverage one of them if you are if you are established brand as i said earlier you need to see which stage of your business you are in uh, to understand what is better for you what is not good for you uh, having said that that from a logical perspective from a emotional perspective of course as a consumer uh the the fun of watching a property like ipl on television together together uh, as a family is always there it's always it's always one up against uh, when you see it on one device that's my take on it yeah mr dubey do you agree yeah you know nothing brings together this country like cricket you know so what happens is that you know first you go and watch t- tv together like uh, alone this day no no i must share this with buddha you know you know dekha kaise mara usse chauka अरे यार क्या मस्त शॉट मारा ना बिल्कुल क्या बॉलिंग किया यू लाइक टू डिस्कस दिस यू नो इट डजेंट हैपन विद एनीथिंग एल्स राइट इट डजेंट हैपन विद आई सैट एंड वॉच एन एपिसोड ऑफ से सीरियल ऑन टीवी आई वोंट नेम एनी सीरियल राइट नाउ एंड यू वोंट गो एंड डिस्कस दैट राइट यू वोंट गो एंड डिस्कस विद समबडी दैट देखा क्या बोला उसने उसको कैसे चाटा मारा यू नो वी नेवर डिस्कस दैट दैट हैपेंस ऑन ऑन क्रिकेट यू गो एंड डिस्कस इट विद योर फ्रेंड्स यू वांट टू like uh, like 2011 वाज सेइंग 2011 देयर वाज नो व्हाट्सएप और एनीथिंग लाइक दैट देयर वर नो कम्युनिटीज facebook was there probably in a limited way so people would discuss it on on uh, on facebook etc but now uh, it's become more interactive so you watch together uh, either physically or virtually so i mean that's that's the thing which uh, cricket does to you uh, especially on tv and uh, uh, it's not going away what will probably happen is that format through which you're watching might change over the period like say suppose uh, just like you know streaming has become free for tv and you know people might more people might see merit in watching it through uh, connected tv devices uh, that number is very small right now it might grow in future tomorrow you never know uh, cricket might become free for everybody right on on tv Stre- i mean just like streaming become free uh, it becomes free to air for everybody i think they did experiment uh, with star utsav movies I think yeah it was very that. limited and very very like uh, they were not into it like if it becomes free for everybody then obviously you know it'll completely kill streaming you know uh there'll be no uh, geo cinema or whatever left in the country so so you know uh so yeah it's it's like uh, uh it's to be watched together people uh, love it uh, on a big format same goes for super bowl i, I was reading a study with which they said that do people like to enjoy super bowl on tv or on small devices like phone uh the answer was on tv i mean america's much more evolved economy and uh, country as a uh, as a whole there uh, the trends are towards tv i would say that same thing will follow in india as well sharing your enthusiasm group viewing i think that absolutely, really works absolutely. okay and arati you work with so many clients uh, share some examples of how cricket on tv has really helped them and also how it kind of uh, helps brands to achieve objectives across the sales funnel uh, yeah uh, so you know adding back to what i spoke about earlier right that um, uh, brands can actually use cricket on tv for achieving different objectives um we strongly believe that today and adding to what you were saying that uh, tv is actually a performance medium it's no long and we advocate that we have models to prove that 
uh, advertising on TV and on cricket leads to uh, you know sales leads to uh, you know achieving different objectives like i reiterated earlier in terms of either say, uh, search going up or footfalls going up right so we truly believe that uh, tv is um, and more importantly sports and cricket uh, uh, actually can work as a performance medium in your entire media plan today right um, uh, one thing, in terms of using cricket, I mean, one of the couple of brands that I think really stand out for me are not the ones who are, not from a title sponsorship or an associate sponsorship or the big uh, monies and the big deeds over there, right? I think how brands effectively use it beyond just a impression or a spot buy, right? Uh, how do you kind of integrate into the sport, right? Uh, how do you kind of uh, buy uh, cricket effectively? Right, uh, like you know, not all brands have that wherewithal to spend that kind of money to be present for the entire two months. Right, uh, now when it comes to IPL, uh, so how do you decide what is the kind of right efficiency levels? What is the kind of uh, placements? What are the kind of associations that you try? Uh, you have a plethora of brands in your portfolio. How do you ensure that you are effectively giving each brand? Uh, you know, the right, uh, 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 you know, the kind of uh, GRPs out there, right? I think to me, how you utilize the entire platform that is available to you, which is so, so huge today uh, in terms of creating impact and how best you deliver what the client and the brand needs uh, in that uh, during the campaign is very important. Uh, and the third thing which is very important is like I told you earlier is about you know, how do you build associations, right? Uh, how do you use the uh, platform, uh, the sport con contextually? Uh, so like for instance, I mean, um, uh, one of our brands, Lens Cards, has always been on cricket. I mean, they've been quite, um, so their associations with cricket has been uh, for a long time. But, you know, we woke up to the fact to say that, you know, can we do something different today? Can we actually, uh, you know, stand out in this whole, uh, Jambori on uh, cricket, right? So you kind of contextually, in a very tongue-in-cheek way, uh, used fall of wickets and associated with, uh, uh, you know, um, eyesight and, you know, how the depletion in, in terms of your eyesight and why you need glasses. Uh, it's a lovely piece of work. I think uh, I'm probably happy to share the work that we've done on that. Um, and, and the messaging was all towards the end, but it kind of built through you know, the fact that there was uh, fall of wickets and it all happened likely because of the fact that, you know, uh, you needed your eyesight to get checked and therefore promoted, uh, you know, um, uh, AR testing, etc. right? So how do you contextually use the game, how do you contextually use the platform is, I think, a lot more uh, important. Um, and uh, the fourth thing that I'd like to leave behind is that, especially when it comes to IPL, right, you've got two months of, uh, two, uh, two month window. Uh, so I kind of want to go back to a couple of years back on how Vodafone Zuzus kind of came up with multiple crickets and used that platform to actually get their products and services out there, right? Uh, so I think it's all about, if to just summarize this long uh, drawn out this one is, what is your brand objectives? What do you like to achieve? And how do you do things differently uh, with this, uh, uh, with the cricket and uh, the the platforms. So How marketers can get creative yeah. with it. Okay. And you know, very interesting, you said that, you know, performance, it's, uh, TV has become a big performance yeah. uh, marketing vehicle. Uh, Vikas, would you like to add to that? I think that's something similar you want. Yeah, I mean, I can give you a case study of a leading e-commerce company, right? Uh, th if you look at their overall KPI increase, starting with search share, not only search share, everything else behind that, a cricket, IPL primarily actually in this particular case, drove about two and a half times compared to even normal prime time TV. So prime time IPL drives like even higher. Now you could say, okay, what is the cost of that KPI increase? But you need to also understand one more thing and particularly for upcoming brands, you know, you cannot measure your campaigns in isolation. You have to, uh, you know, measure your campaigns with the category. There is also a cost of not doing things in, again, winner takes all or winner takes some categories. So, you know, uh, a category level uh, comparison of your campaigns with like, some of your competitors kind of uh, uh, definitely getting more cricket on their menu, you need to kind of really think about that. Yeah. 
before I conclude, I think we have very little time. We have literally one minute left. I just like to come back to you and uh, ask you, what is it? I know we spoke about cricket, uh, on TV, branding. I mean, it always helped. And that was the Ms. Norma. Now, because we've spoken much uh, about how it can be a performance vehicle, I want to know from each of you, how are you going to leverage uh, cricket on TV for your brand in the upcoming cricketing season? It's, it's a big one. World Cup, under-19 World Cup, T20, uh, there is IPL happening. So how are you going to use cricket? I think uh, it has to be used very tactically. And uh, uh, so one thing established you know, on table that it works, right? <laughs> so having said that, you know, if it's working, then why, why shouldn't you do it again? Sure. So do it tactically, uh, do it uh, for newer brands, try to establish the brands and probably do continuity with something else. Uh, doing continuity on cricket is very expensive for FMCG brands. That's what I would, I, I would let me just re-qualify that statement. It's difficult for FMCG brand. It may not be difficult for a brand which is funded by, uh, by you know, investors, etc. They have like thousands of crores to spend. But you know, companies which are uh, listed, companies which uh, have to d uh, deliver numbers every quarter, for those companies it's very difficult to continuously spend and uh, go overboard. For newer brands, etc., it makes a lot of sense and has to be used tactically. Even for the brands which are established, you know, just coming in and trying out uh, cricket for newer audiences to reaching out to newer people is always works. Always been there, you know. But again, it's not for faint-hearted. Mr. Mudha. So, um, we've used cricket uh, for, uh, for various purposes. So, I remember uh, the first edition of IPL, we've used it... Uh, to launch, uh, I, re I remember actually the, the formation. So 20, uh, 2007 is when uh, we, we sort of uh, won the T20 World Cup. And uh, there was this new fervor and, uh, and, and we had this first edition in 2008. And, uh, and that was the exact time when we launched uh, uh, a brand called 2020. Uh, and, and what better than to have an association with a tournament like, uh, uh, like an IPL. And uh, it, it paid uh, huge uh, dividends. It yielded very well for the brand. Uh, in fact, uh, it was a case study, one of the fastest to clock a thousand crore turnover in, in less than three years. Uh, so, so that's one. Uh, and we've also used uh, cricket and we intend to do the same uh, for say launching new brands. We've launched Happy Happy, we've launched on, on IPL, we've launched 2020, we've launched uh, Parle Platina, we've launched uh, several new campaigns. I think we'll again choose uh, something uh, of those sorts. I think that's, that's... One more thing. 1983 World Cup also, Dabar was there on cricket. <laughs> I was not there back then. Yeah. Uh, Miss Mr. Goshal. Okay, a quick one. Uh, use IPL on TV strategically to build your propositions throughout over a period of time. You use IPL on digital for reminding. Use IPL on ground tactically. That's my message. Any anything you want to add, uh, Rathi, Vikas? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, when it comes to, we have a mixed bag of clients where the, uh, the IPL kind of fills up quite a few of their requirements, right? Uh, uh, be it only a regional focus, which today you can pick up only regional feeds, um, or um, uh, or for the some of the clients who are for the faint-hearted, they're also looking at considering it for their brands to build top of mind, right? Or for the launches. Uh, then uh, there is uh, also uh, different options of brand solutions that we have today that you can build and customize for your clients, right, On your, and the brands, whatever the objective is. So we're looking towards that uh, to see uh, what we can do differently for some of our clients. Um, and uh, uh, more importantly, it's about, uh, I think, as a, as a, I mean, as a head of a media agency, it's about how do I use um, cricket and TV more effectively? Right? I think how do I give the best solutions to each of our different clients in terms of how to use the platform, how to use the sport, and how to buy in on it. I think that's it. Vikas? I would say, you know, uh, with TV being measurable now, I would say, you know, to brands, integrate cricket in your overall, you know, multi-touch attribution studies. 
you know, TV was considered separate before. You don't need to consider it separate. It's part of your overall funnel. Right attributions will fall in the right place then. Super. So I'd like to end with some stats. You know, as per Bark data for the past year, I think younger audiences in the age group of 15 to 30 have actually seen a higher growth in TV viewership than the rest of the groups. So that's, that's a big one for any brand which is trying to bring, uh, get the attention of, yeah. Uh, and um, another thing is I think live sports on TV has reached new heights year after year, like we mentioned, you know, going from three, 730 million to, in 2020 to 803 million in 2023. Is so sports this is sport, sports, all sports events. And of course, cricket has been the driving factor for it. So I think in the next few months, uh, we're going to see that sky is the limit and it's going to be a big treat for all the advertisers gearing up to advertise on cricket. Thank you so much. Lovely having you as an audience. And thank you so much for all that insightful talk. Thank you so much.